Hey there, Sharon Carnell from here. Welcome to day 2096 of What You Have to Know, documenting the journey. As originally in 2018, I think I came online and started documenting my journey, just showing what I was working on, what was working, what wasn't working, as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. And I've learned a lot, a lot of things the hard way, which is not the best way to learn, but it's just a drop in the ocean, or in this case, the Chippewa River, River, the Chippewa River that uh, we're discussing today. We're talking about how contribution, and why I say contribution is just a drop in the bucket, uh, or drop in the ocean, drop in the bucket actually came first. But it's a drop in the ocean in terms of what we can do as an individual human being. It's often just a tiny part of the whole, but we can make a difference. You know, a lot of times people will use this expression to mean something's insignificant or trivial and that what we do doesn't really matter or make a difference, but it really does matter and it does make a difference. We can be a great example or we can be a, a pretty strong warning against what not to do or an example of what to do. So we're talking about uh, that idiom, a drop in the ocean, not in a bucket. We did bucket a while ago, but the actually drop in the bucket was uh, the preliminary or the precursor to a drop in the ocean. I guess somebody thought the ocean's bigger, therefore it's a stronger idiom than a drop in the bucket. Anyway, you look at it, it's a little thing compared to the whole or to a great big thing. So uh, that's actually a biblical reference as well as Rumi, the Persian poet in the 13th century used it. And so it's been around for centuries. Anything that's been around for centuries has probably impacted many of us and isn't just a drop in the ocean. Uh, for super size, not super size, that was super size your business. For our Get Your Goals Annual Challenge, day 293 today, we talked about the area of contribution. We're focusing on contribution this month, our contribution goals. We talked about how contribution interacts with all the other areas and aspects of our life. And I drew this for a, a client to show them because you know I love being artistic, not like my aunt, not very artistic, but it does communicate in the picture that every area and aspect of our life is connected to every other one. So if we think that our emotional or our relationships or our mental state or our mindset doesn't impact the other areas and aspects of our lives, including contribution, we're just kind of fooling ourselves. Anyway, so that was our topic today. I like to, I keep a journal just along with everybody else when I'm doing the challenge. And I just like to do this as a little grid where I, throughout the day, will think about how does this interact? How does contribution interact with my physical well-being? Well, if I'm not physically fit or strong or healthy, it's pretty hard to give anything to other people or, or other organizations outside of myself if I don't feel good enough to even hardly get out of bed. Same is true if I don't feel financially healthy. We don't have to just donate financially. We can donate things like our time, our energy, our skills, our attention. Uh, but sometimes we think that, we, that that doesn't count as much, but it actually counts more because the most valuable thing we have to give is our time, our resources, and our attention. All right, that's it. That's all I've got today. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.